I'm delighted to kind of turn this over to Chad Mairn, who is has been a faithful member of the committee that's put together this conference. And Chad is lightly going to introduce our speakers today in what we're calling the Wintry Mix, which is a mix of student presentations and short presentations from our professional colleagues. So Chad, chime in. Hello, good morning everybody. Um, yeah, I'm going to introduce the uh, Wintry Mix speakers. Um, the first one is Roxanne Riskin, who will present Tech's team, Tech's team Go Mobile with LIS students Caitlin Carroll, Megan Grenier, and Alex Wagner. Um, Roxanne is currently working at Fairfield University um, as a library technology specialist, and she supervises the library student assistant tech team. Uh, Roxanne is also a computer teacher and lab manager and has presented at EDUCAUSE, Sloan C Symposium for Emerging Technologies, and she is currently writing an article for library services using mobile devices. So, Roxanne, the mic is yours. Thank you. Hi, I'm Alex, a student here at Fairfield University, part of the Domena Nicelius Library Tech Team, and I will be the moderator for the handheld librarian student lightning round. Our two student presenters today are Caitlin and Megan, who both have Vokita avatars on the screen. Also displayed is our QR code in the upper right hand corner, which we use to access our student wiki. Roxanne Riskin, the library technology specialist, has established a team of 11 library technology students who maintain and service over 200 library technologies. We're happy to be chosen for this conference since our mobile devices and apps are providing us with innovative advantages that we previously didn't have. At the beginning, we were totally paper bound using a binder system. Now, 100% of our documentation is in the cloud and off the wire, and can be accessed anywhere by any tech team member. At this point, we would like to thank Beth Avery, the 4th Handheld Library Conference, and Susan Manning from Learning Times for choosing us as student presenters. Let's begin with Megan for our first question. So Megan, what mobile devices do you use for supporting library technologies and why? At our library, we use one iPad, four iPod Touches, and smartphones such as iPhones and Blackberries that I'm sure most of you have. Each of these devices is small, lightweight, and much more convenient than desktops. Most importantly, each of these devices have the apps that we've researched and then downloaded to support the library. At this point, we would like for you all to take a poll, just a short poll for our handheld library conference participants. As you can see, through our own library, we actually use some iPods and iPhones to communicate with other members. Don't we, Caitlin? Yep. And we're also using Blackberries, which we can download applications on as well. Lots of people are using iPads. Well, that's good news. Hot new commodity. <laughs> also, a lot of people are using the Android, which I highly suggest is a very interesting tool to use. At this point, we'd like to close the poll. We thank you once again for participating. And now we'll move on to our next question. So, Caitlin, which apps do you use for each mobile device, and what do you use each app for? Well, all of the devices that you just saw have Evernote and Skype applications that are free in their app stores. Our tech team uses these apps to document problems and solutions with Evernote. Whereas if we need to communicate with another tech team member or with Roxanne, we use Skype, IM, video, or audio chat. Now what exactly is Evernote? It is an app which archives all daily activity of our tech team. In this app, we have created notebooks, which you can see on the left-hand side of the slide, for each area of the library, where we can see what technologies have been checked and what issues there have been based on what tech team members have noted. The last time I made a note, it was in the information commons of our library, and a student had an issue connecting to the internet. So I went on to Evernote, I created a note, which you could see in the middle, and then I wrote down the problem and the solution and saved it in the notebook for the information comments. Another great thing about Evernote is it is in real time, which allows instant communication with our tech team. And as you can see on the slide, on the right, Evernote has the ability to record notes as text, photo, or voice, where we can add tags and attributes, and everything is keyword searchable. And lastly, 
You can reference back to archived notes and see what issues there are throughout the library's technologies and any updates that have been made. As for Skype, what you can see on the current slide are two tech team members, Wee Tang and Stephanie, who are Skyping from a 4G iPod Touch and a PC from two different areas of the library. They are trying to collaborate on a problem without the need to physically walk throughout the three floors of our library. This makes communicating with our team quicker and easier, while also enabling us to take care of multiple issues at a time. And our tech team has also used the iPad and iPod Touches, and we found that we can perform multiple voice chats to discuss problems as well. Now, Megan, what exactly is the Dropbox? Another app that we use in the library is called Dropbox. Dropbox is an app where we can save files on one computer or device and open them on another. We can use text documents, photos, and videos in Dropbox. As you can see on the slide, Dropbox can be opened from the desktop if it's downloaded, it can be opened from a web browser, and it can be opened from mobile devices, and we use it in all three ways. For example, when I go into a lab in the library and see that an Ethernet or a USB cable is broken, I can open up a browser and open the Dropbox and find the spreadsheet with the information and see how to fix it, even if I created the spreadsheet on another computer. You can see this Excel spreadsheet on the slide, highlighted by the blue arrow and circle. My favorite way to use Dropbox is with it saved onto the desktop. The red circle on this slide highlights this easy to use folder. Another interesting fact is that Dropbox is Mac and PC compatible. At this point, we'd like to ask the participants to take our last poll of our presentation. Thank you once again for your participation. We highly value all of your answers. I also see that someone asked what the URL for the wiki is, so I'm going to type that. Seems a lot of people have used Mebo. I find Mebo has been really helpful when I just have a question on a research project. Yeah. You can just ask at a librarian. We have that on our library homepage, so students can access a reference librarian, can give them advice if they need help with something. And now I think we are going to close the poll. We thank you once again for your participation, and we hope that you enjoy the rest of our presentation. Next question is for Caitlin. How have these apps benefited our library since we began using them? Well, I have been here for a year and a half, and there's been a significant change with the efficiency in our documentation and with our collaboration with library staff and team members since we began using Evernote and Skype. Since we're an academic library, the Information Commons, which you can see on the current slide, is the busiest area, so it is vital for us to use Skype on the iTouch when issues arise so we can quickly solve them. However, I'm sure Megan has seen an even greater change given that she's been here for three years. I began working in the library in 2008, and we used to document our work in paper kept in binders. This paper system was hard to keep organized and took up important space on library shelves, as pictured on the slide. Now, as many libraries today are going green, our mobile devices and apps allow us to store our work in the cloud. The cloud is efficient and allows for real-time, instant feedback to provide the best support for our library and its students. So, to sum up, Give me five reasons how any library and student staff could benefit from using mobile technology. Well, first of all, each member of the tech team and supervisor can see immediate results recorded in real time using the apps chosen. The staff can keep track of all problems in the library by reviewing archive notes in Evernote. And using Skype allows us to collaborate easily with other members and with your supervisor. Using mobile technology can reinforce a library's green policy. And lastly, of course, mobile devices are easy, fast, and convenient to provide service to the library. As you can see in this picture, our library is a very green library. Not only inside, but also outside, as you can see, by our beautiful lawn. And we were even listed as an all-green campus in the Princeton Review 2010 Guide to 286 Green Colleges. Also, in addition to this, we have many people using mobile devices to connect, maybe even at a concert like this one, to record the memories and listen to the music over and over again. At this point, we would conclude our presentation, and we thank you very much for inviting us to the 4th Handheld Library Conference. Thank you. Thank you so very much. And as you can see here, the QR code on the right is our wiki, so you can access that, or the link is on the bottom left-hand side.
Thank you, group. Go ahead and turn your mic off for a second. Thanks. Marvelous job. I love that we're able to feature student groups. And for those of you who are looking at this slide, if you click on those links, they'll probably open in a browser window. Um, and depending on whether you're looking at this interface in the browser or outside, that's where you should look. Okay? All right. Next up is Isabel Altamirano, and Isabel is going to be oh talking gosh. about...